Hi, Linda. Hi, Kim. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's well, uh, it's great to be here with you. Great to be here with you too. What's going well today? What's going well is I uh, had every Thursday I meet with my middle daughter and we get together on Zoom and she asked me what what you know what my week was like and I just had all these string of of exciting experiences that um, I just like kind of went on this rampage of, you know, this concert we went to and that concert we went to oh. and how amazing I felt. And then a voice lesson that was really great. And then a, a, I did a unruly creator session with you know, one of our friends, Lee, uh, a, a, about my singing practice and my vocal practice. And she just really, really helped me see things from a bigger picture. And, um, you know, so it was great to be able to share that with her and have her listen. <laughs> wow, I didn't know you sang. Um, I do, yes. You, you are just full of surprises. <laughs> I want to hear more about that. Yeah, yeah it's been one of my um, lifelong passions, yeah. I love it. I love to sing myself. Haven't Great. done it in a while, but we'll have to discuss that sometime. Yes. Um, so you are a well-being and happiness coach. That's correct, yes. Tell me how that started. What was your journey? In um, I was always looking for things to help me feel better. I, I, was, I was a chronic pain sufferer from the time I was very young. I, I remember about age 10, I was like, you know, this is just, there's something here that I just, you know, and I was always trying to like stretch and find relief for uh, physical pain. And I was also a chronic depressive, and I was always trying to find ways to feel happier and and make the happiness last. But I was a pretty, you know, I was a pretty glass half empty kind of person for a very, very, very long time. Mm. But I'm sick of that. And uh, when I uh, I lived in Los Angeles, and I after my children were grown, I went to um, massage school and got certified. As, as a massage therapist. And I was really, really interested on, in helping people get out of pain because I'd been in pain. So I, was, I, I developed tools and techniques that were my own take on some very unique and specific body work tools to take people out of pain. And I was real, pretty successful at that. And I really loved my practice there using massage therapy, techniques in a specific way to help release pain. And I became aware at that time that some people had a connection with their long-term body pain and emotional issues. So I began looking for a solution for that. And I found EFT, emotional freedom technique. Uh, that was a, a, almost, that was about 25 years ago. And it, it, EFT was developed about 30 years ago by Gary Craig an engineer from Stanford about how to affect the body uh, in, in a healing way uh, when it has, when people have beliefs about themselves or ideas about the past, you know, how to let that stuff go so that their body would feel better. And I could get it to work on my clients, but I couldn't get it to work, it up, work for me. Really? <laughs> And I was still in pain and I was still hurting and I would do the EFT and it, and it was like, but I saw it work on so-and-so, you know, last week and they report feeling a lot better. So I kept looking for the answer to that. And, and then I found a variation of EFT called faster EFT, which is a collection of tools and techniques in addition to tapping that helped me understand why it wasn't working for me. And oh. if I shifted my perspective a little bit and asked different questions and then did the tapping, it was like, ah, okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay, and when you then, say tapping. Okay, so tapping is a, is a, a self um, a self healing tool that you can use to tap the meridian points. Uh, the endpoints of the meridians in the body, and uh, and every 
emotion or belief has a body connection, which is what uh, what Gary Craig discovered and uh, and and other people have worked with tapping. And so when you tap the energy meridians that the Chinese and you know Orient, or, you know uh, the Chinese have known about for millennia. It stimulates the nervous system and calms the nervous system in the body. And then it helps the brain to let go of the negative emotional connections with the belief or the pain or the memory that is still haunting you. And then it helps, helps you be able to uh, change how you're thinking about it, how you're holding about it, the story you're telling about yourself. So that's primarily what I do is uh, using tool uh, tapping is a primary tool, but not every tool, every, not, it's not everything that I do. I help people tell a different story about themselves so that they can uh, change how they relate to their past. They can forgive their father. They can forgive themselves for messing up. You know, They can start telling a story, a more useful and positive story about their possibilities, about themselves, about what they could do, uh, the possibility of going for their dreams rather than like, well, yeah, I used to be, yeah, you know, I used to be a painter, but you know, yeah, you know, I just have no motivation. So, you know, rather than saying that, it's like, you know, this really sets my heart on fire, you know, and and what is it that's stopping me? So that's how I got into doing this was I was trying to fix, help me fix me, uh, heal my own pain. And in the process, then I discovered these really simple yet unique and quick acting tools that help other people take other people out of pain and help them like, you know, let go of the bad parts of their past. So when you dis when you say you discovered it, did you look online and find this? I uh, yeah, well, because yeah, I was almost sixty at the time I discovered a regular EFT. Okay. And you know, and I felt like every year I got older, my list of complaints got <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> bigger and bigger, and you know, and I spent a lot of time chasing remedies, you know, special diets special supplements, you know, this doctor knows, you know, or body work or not body work or exercise or meditate. I, you know, I just tried everything. I, really, I love it. You were on a mission. Yeah, I was, I was years. It sounds I wanted, like I wanted to feel well and I wanted to feel happy and uh, you know, positive thinking is great, but I still hurt, you know, and when I hurt, that makes me cranky. Right. <laughs> Yes, I can imagine. Yeah, so I um, so I was on a mission to heal myself, and along the way, I learned tools and techniques that uh, are simple, effective, easy to learn. Something that that clients can do themselves, and I can help people take themselves out of pain if they're open to changing the story they tell about themselves and about their past and about you know what, even if they've had you know, histories of abuse or histories of uh, poverty or histories of, uh, like for me, it was a, a very strict religious upbringing that taught certain concepts and ideas about who I was and who I could be and I could go no further, you know, uh, or that I was, um, you know, a terrible person because I was mad at somebody, you know. Uh, so, learning to overcome those things and tell a different story to myself helped me eventually let go of my pain. And I've, and I've, and now, and I get a lot of people who are, they come with uh, chronic food intolerances, which was also part of my story. Mm. You know? Or they come with chronic pain or chronic depression or, you know, but kind of what that's all masking is all these, uh, stories about depression or about uh, the past where it's like if I could just get my dad to admit he never loved me then I'll be better you know but <laughs> dad's dead right so you know you you're never you, you've got to change how you relate to the dad and you and that's what I help people do you know and, it's like, and so oh, you yeah. kind of help people dig deeper 
um, oh, in a way, and yet shift, uh, yes. you know, uh, and shift the story they're telling. And, uh, you know, like myself, you know, I was one of the ones who wanted to make dad and mom admit that they mistreated me. But mom and dad are long gone. Right. I've been an adult for decades. And so it's me doing it to me in here, you know. And so shifting how I treat myself, how I look at myself, how I look at the story I've been telling about mom and dad helps me to go, oh, right. They were, you know, and I knew intellectually before they were doing the best they could. But yeah. shifting it on a neurological level is a different thing. And does it help you kind of rewrite your past? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. That's pretty powerful. Yeah, it is. Because, yes. And, you know, if, um, I, you know, I had a colleague who just, she in, in, uh, experienced a lot of physical abuse from her parents and physical and, and emotional and mental abuse from her parents. She went in and rewrote the story of the kind of people they were. And they, you know, they were wealthy. They loved her very much. They traveled, they exposed her to all kinds of culture. She rewrote her whole past. Yeah, and then she probably realized it had nothing to do with her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's the kind of thing that I help people do. And, and the most amazing thing is that the brain is way more flexible and plastic than we ever thought it was. People will often come in with a problem and feel really bad, and then we can help them shift it to such a degree that they Oh, they can't find it anymore. And it's, it's truly magical to watch people shift and change. And then once they step out from their pain and their negative stories, they're like, oh, that's right. I'm a singer and I would, and my passion is singing or I'm a, I'm one of my clients is a glass artist and she, but she hadn't, you know, she didn't always wanted to open a studio and but she was too afraid and she was like well but who am i and well it's going to be too expensive and it's you know and she uh we worked through all of the levels of pain all of the reasons why all the patterns why she held herself back or believed she couldn't or why the issues from her childhood were just causing too much stress for her and she now she's opened her studio it's been open about a year she's She's making glass art. She's she's happy. She's doing positive things in her life and traveling and yeah, and starting like a whole new chapter of her life that before wasn't open to her. So, so do you kind of take the energy they're spending on their pain and use that same energy to be creative? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yes, that's kind of you know you know you find out what stops them and then help them. Kind of refocus. Refocus, yeah. So do you, so you talk to them, you coach them, you figure out what's going on. Then when does the tapping come in? Um, we, I do a very uh, extensive intake about what it is they want to shift. And then we work mainly through memories, uh, events that stand out in their mind as being keys to how, how why they are, <laughs> So screwed up the way they are, and then tapping will help them take down the triggers in those when they think about those memories. Often the brain will change it itself, the more successive rounds of tapping that we do on it. And as we tap down the anxiety and the fear, uh, as we change the expression on the looks on their faces and the memory, as we change the sound of the voices, how they felt, what they were doing, then, it, then if, it ha if the brain hasn't spontaneously rewritten that memory and made it into a happy memory, then we, through successive rounds of tapping, we rewrite it. And then I have them practice it over and over like a YouTube video. And then I have them write it down in their happy journal. I have every client create a happy journal where they write down their positive affirmations, happy memories that ha have actually happened to them or happy memories that we've rewritten in the process of their uh, of the sessions that we do together. Their you know, favorite sayings, 
uh, Mother's Day cards, pictures of flowers that their you know, their husband or their boyfriend or you know their mom sent them. Or a happy journal becomes a resource for positivity and feeling better. And then from there, you know, we build on those things, and then uh, the brain and the body begins letting go of the pain. The body begins letting go of the food, the food sensitivities. The body. That's, that's, that's interesting. How a lot of this can cause physical pain right in your brain can cause physical pain yeah the beliefs the negative beliefs we have even the positive beliefs we have about ourselves have a body connection and then we shift how the body relates to that and then the belief changes so and the and the cool thing about what i do with tapping most people to change the core things that they're working on only need maybe six sessions maybe some people will, if they've got a lot of stuff, they'll, they'll get 10 sessions. People who come back to me are usually wanting to work on bigger, you know, more long-term goals. Uh, but if all you want to do is, you know, is stop hating yourself and stop having this digestive upset every time you eat, you can probably get to that in about six sessions. So that's another cool thing is it works relatively fast. Okay, well, I have seen online tapping. Yeah. And I didn't know really understand what it was. Uh huh. But maybe can you explain what it is for people who aren't watching you? Can you explain what exactly what are you doing? Are you doing something with your hand? Yes. Yeah, so it's um, it's just tapping on the endpoint, the, the meridian points of um, the meridian system. Tapping with your fingers. Uh, with your fingers, there are a million meridian points, but the basic ones that I use because it's kind of a, a, a shortened, faster method are the uh, point just on the inside of the eyebrows. And it's just tapping lightly. Just like, tapping lightly with your fingers with between your, your eyebrows. Uh, yeah, and hard enough that you can that you can feel it, but not so hard that it hurts. Okay. And then moving to the, the, the meridian point to the side of the eye, right about the end of, edge of the eyebrow, and then moving to the point under the eye, which is just kind of in the center, right under the eye, uh, the top of the cheekbone. And then the point at the breastbone where it, it, there's a little notch there where the collarbone and the, and the, and the breastbone come together, just right there. And then squeezing the wrist because there are like three meridian points that go th that go through the wrist, breathing in, breathing out, and saying peace. The easiest thing is to start tapping that point between the eye and say, "That anxiety, I let it go." It's While you're tapping, you say these things yes. out loud. And I, that's the easiest thing you can say is that feeling. I'm I'm letting it go. That belief. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go letting it go. And then do you, do you use both hands to do both sides yeah. of your face or just one? You can do both sides of the face at the same time. You can switch. Okay. You can tap one, just one place. If I'm driving and I'm feeling anxious about traffic, I can just tap one place. Oh, that's where I have anxiety is when I'm driving. Mm -hmm. So I could do that while I'm driving. Or if I'm, uh, and there are other points that, that a person can use, but I won't go into those right now. If you're giving a public speech, you can tap, you know, and you're feeling anxious, you can tap out of sight of, you know, other people, but it helps calm the nervous system and it helps the brain body connection be uh, op more optimally functioning. Is this something that somebody, once they learn it, is this something that somebody would have to practice every day? If they want to feel better, only on the days they want to feel better. Yeah. <laughs> oh, only on those days, but the other days, right. nah, they don't need to. And okay. there, you know, and one of the beauties of this, that one of the reasons I love it is that these are tools I can teach my clients and then mm -hmm. they can tap and they can let go and they can notice oh, something. This is really bothering me. Breathe in, breathe it out. I'm going to let it go. You know, it's time to let this go. Right. You know, it's time to let this go. Oh, yes, I'm feeling better. It's time to let this go. How, so, how long does it take every day to do that? If you're working on something specific, you know, it depends on how, you know, if it has like all this 
all these roots in the past, you might need to spend an hour on it. But if it's like, you know, you're really irritated because someone in the household left the refrigerator ajar and, you know, and now stuff are, is all warm in there, you know, that might take you, you know, 10 minutes of tapping. It's like, that's right. You know, I've done stuff like that myself. It's, it happens, you know, it's time to let that go. You know, they didn't mean it. They were in a hurry. It's time to let that go. I'm safe. The food's safe. It's all right. It's time to let that go. You know, that what, might, what about if somebody says something to you that bothers you? Would you tap instead of react? Well, it would depend on what it is, of course. But oh. uh, <laughs> yes, I would. I, if, if it's a situation where I'm feeling anxious, I would probably already be tapping a hidden way uh, on the meridian points in my hands. So it depends. There are lots of variations and subtle shifts in the tools and techniques that help you get through stressful situations that help, you know, if you get triggered in a big way by an event or something that you're doing or something someone says, you probably need to come get a session with me because we, if we can't always find our way out of some big triggering event by ourselves. And yet there's a lot that individuals can do on their own. By learning the tapping tools that I teach, I also learn, teach some visualization techniques. I also have them, you know, do the happy journal is another um, way of help keeping their mood up. Continuous tapping for an hour a day is another very simple and effective way to help up level the, the nervous system so it's more calm, more strong, more able to like, you know, roll with the punch. That's, I've been collecting tools all my life and now I can share them <laughs> with people who are, you know, want to learn like, you know, like I did, how to regulate their own nervous system, how to deal with their own anxiety with a little help from me, but you know, they're most, they're mostly on their own with it. Can people do this sitting at their desk, sitting in yes. front of the TV, yes. anywhere? Anywhere, yes. Okay. Uh, you know, in a board meeting. Uh, <laughs> in a board meeting, okay. <laughs> in, the bath in the bathroom, uh, you know, at, the, at a restaurant when um, their best friend says something really shocking and they need a minute to compose themselves. Um, you know, uh, I do a, a lot of tapping, surreptitious tapping when I'm out to dinner with with friends uh, of my husband that I don't know very well because I, I'm a shy person and I, I feel challenged in social situations. So I use subtle tapping to help me kind of keep a baseline calm and be present now rather than be like having anxiety issues or, you know, or like, I have to get out of here, I have to get out of here, you know, or whatever. So yes. It helps in stressful situations. It helps you relax. A lot of people use it to help them go to sleep. For me, I, it's the opposite. For me, it helps. It wakes me up. So I have to make sure to not do it uh, when I'm trying to go to sleep. Oh, so people can use it for insomnia. Some people have found success with it, with insomnia. I can't, I'm not one of those people who can attest to that, <laughs> but I, uh, because it wakes me up. Because then it's like I get into my in mind and it's like, and I start having all these positive possibilities. And then it's like, well, I want to like jump up and get, get something done, you know? That's so, how I am normally. I, in fact, I woke up at four this morning and I had all of these great ideas in my head, something uh -huh. I wanted to put on my website. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I didn't want to get up and write something down. So I just stayed awake. And I was so excited. All these things kept coming into my head and I wanted to get up. So I got up around 540. I went in the bathroom and I spoke into my watch. I tried oh, to yeah. just get it all out of my head into my watch. And it was hard. That's it took, idea. I, think, I think by the time 630 rolled around, because I went out for a walk too, and I was still talking into my watch. I must have had 20 or 30 messages on here just from me getting it all out, but I had to put it somewhere, but it, it's just, it's so exciting. <laughs> So, it is. Yes. Yeah. yes. So. so that's, that's great. That's a great idea. I'm going to borrow that idea. Please do share it with, share it with clients who are like, I have this, oh, I have all this stuff in here. Yeah. You got to get it out. Otherwise you're, you're going to just, you're just going to stress yourself or you're going to 
uh, forget it, or you're going to, you're going to worry that you're going to forget it. And then that'll stress you. So, yeah. Yeah. I usually keep a pad and a flashlight pen next to oh. the bed because, yeah. because it, because when I've gone without the flashlight pen, I can't see what the heck I'm doing. Right. And so the flashlight just shines light. And so I, at least I know I'm getting something on the paper. I can't even read what I'm writing, but it's lighter so I can see it. Yeah. So people that have come to you, have they tried other methods or techniques that didn't work beforehand? Yes. Usually the, the people who I work with are folks who are like me. They've tried everything. They've been, you know, they've, they've tried, you know, they've tried meditation. They've tried exercise. They've tried special diets. They've, they've been to this professional, that professional. They've, they've gone for counseling. They, you know, they've done their own homework and they're frustrated because they're still in pain or they're still, their stomach still hurts or they're still having headaches or whatever. They're still having the same fight with their mom that, that they had all their life. Uh, and they can't understand why, why they keep walking in the same trap. So yeah, and they, usually they've gone, you know, they've gone to counselors and doctors and nutritionists and uh, exercise you know, professionals and all of those folks have great tools. They do. And I've used them myself and I still, you know, I still go to doctors and I still get counseling and I still, you know, when there are old unresolved issues in the body that like a massage therapist can't reach or a psychotherapist, you, you keep talking about it, but you know, it's in your body. It's not, you know, you you need and that's why the tapping I, I found is so brilliant because it's it's you know it stimulates the nervous system and the body it's a physical technique that you do and it helps you unlock the the emotional physical connection between the the body the how you're carrying it in the body and how you're carrying it in your mind it's so fascinating it is it is really fascinating and um, so basically you, you help people get rid of their pain. And yeah. then there's all these happy people walking around now because of you. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, and that's why I love what I do, because I feel like um, we focus on, on how they're doing it, not the story. So I don't, so we don't listen to a vast retelling of, and this time my dad said, and this time I did. Right. We instead we add, we find out how they do it, then we shift how they do it, and then as you change that, then the perceptions of the of the client changes. And so it sounds like they're no longer past thinkers. Exactly. By the time you're done with them, yes, it helps people bring them in themselves into the present. Or it takes them out of the future, which anxiety is about the future, right? So folks that are anxious and who can't fly because they're afraid, you know, or who can't get in an elevator because they're afraid or they can't swim anymore because, you know, they saw Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, we take people either out of the past or out of the future or both and bring them into the present. That's what tapping does. It helps you center. It helps you. Uh, change how you hold the past or hold the future and helps you tell a new story. And, you know, the story I want to tell is about happiness and success and how you can live your dreams. You know, you don't have to wait. You're not too old to still be singing. You're not too old to be a glass artist. You're not too old to be a coach or a storyteller or a, a kayaker or whatever is your passion. So yeah. I, amen that, to that. I, wait. Yeah, I think that's that's like the kind of life I want to live. So can you share a couple of success stories? Um, yeah, let's see. Well, they, my client who's the glass artist, she, uh, you know, she has a passion for this that she but she was like, because she hurt all the time, it was like, yeah, well, I don't really, you know, I don't have the energy to like open a studio I don't have the that's, energy. that's the one you were talking about before with yeah, her, even, she had a terrible but, past yeah about yeah. Her, yeah yes so and and what we what she, and what she uh, said in her testimonial is she discovered with my help that the pain was actually layers of pat of patterns you know of beliefs and um and negative mantras about herself stories that 
were no longer applicable. And then as we began to shift those, it was, she, was, she could begin to see the possibilities and the changes that she could make in her own self that helped her shift the focus from the past from the pain into the present. From there, she was she was on a roll, you know, it's like, and she got out her kiln and then she started making glass again. And then she, and then she's like, okay, now I'm gonna open a studio. Now I need this very specific kind of infrastructure support, have a glass studio, which I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> and she magically found it, you know, it was like so amazing because she got herself lined up using tapping and other positive techniques. And she, Boy, she really did a 180, didn't she? She really, really, really did. Yeah. And then, um, you know, then uh, I have another client who's, she's a storyteller and a teacher of storyteller of stories. And she, now she travels the world teaching people how to tell their own story and how to, uh, you know, and before she was just, I'm just a scared little person. And, you know, how can I do this? And I had this, you know, I grew up in on the wrong side of the track. And but as we clean that up and how she relates to who she is in spite of how she grew up. And in spite of what other people thought of her, of what her parents thought of her, what her siblings think of her now, it's like. Oh, but I have these skills and I, and that's right. And I have organized this and I have, you know, I've taught these, these classes and I have these skills and I can create this workshop for storytelling and, uh, and teach other people how to do it. Now it's just, it's just a matter of when she starts feeling discouraged or playing the old memories again, some people do find a challenge letting go of the old memories, you know, and if, and you can put that record back on and play it again, if you're willing to tap and let those go, you know, you can still keep new happy memories guiding you for where you want to go in the future. That's another thing we do is we change the, the stories we've been telling ourselves about what's possible in the future. I don't have to be, uh, to, you know, share the same future path that my mom has. You know, I don't have to be, you know, unable to walk and unable to talk and unable to keep singing. And, you know, I can, I, I can, I can create a different story about my future and what I'm capable of and what I can do and become at any age. So well, it sounds like yeah, you've helped, I love, you've helped yeah. people and now they're thriving. Yes. Yes. And I want them, you know, I want other people to know that they it's never too late to live their dreams and it's never too late to be happy or be out of pain you know and if i get you know if i get pain if my hip starts hurting again it's like okay i've got an issue i need to go sit down and tap it out you're so inspiring well i thank you you really <laughs> it's, are it's fun to talk about the the things that i've learned and the successes that i see in client in my clients and how they have they have changed their lives, you know, with the tools that helped me change mine. So that's why, why I do what I do. Yeah. And it's never too late. That's right. It's not. So do people come to you in person or are they on Zoom or both? I, yeah, I mean, on Zoom, it's okay. just like the most amazing, convenient tool, <laughs> you know, because uh, I can work with people. I work with people all around the world and I get to hear stories from folks in Germany or Israel, uh, Australia or New Zealand or the Pacific Northwest where I live. I'm in Portland, Oregon. If I had to wait for people to come, physically come and find me, I was like, that would be really boring. Yeah. <laughs> So, so it makes me, uh, so I'm available. My session, I, my, you know, I offer a free one hour strategy call where we talk about what somebody is, they want to change. Then we, I do a demo for about 30 minutes on something, you know, something that bothered them about, you know, for the last couple of months, but they, they would like to feel better about. And so I actually demonstrate how we shift that, that through tapping and successive rounds of tapping and how quickly, you know, something that was bothering them like a 10, you know, is now a zero. 
you know, we did that in, in um, you know, 30 minutes or 15 minutes. And so if we can do that really quickly, imagine applying that to the, the, the big issue. You know, that's why I say most people need maybe six to 10 sessions. And my sessions are two hours long. The real sessions, real sessions are two hours long. Um, but I teach them how to heal themselves, you know, and how to, you know, it's fine to come back to me, but, you know, you got this. Well, you give them the tools they need in order exactly. to accomplish that. Exactly. Yeah. So where so, can people find you? So I, I have a website, lindaheinsen.com. It's um, Linda, L-I-N-D-A-H-E-I-N-S-O-H-N.com. And uh, if you'll put that in the show notes, people can reach me there. Yep. I'm also, I, I share my photos on Instagram uh, at L.L. Heinsen, H-E-I-N-S-O-H-N. And I also have a personal page on Facebook, um, same, L.L. Heinsen. That's where you can find me. I do give a free one hour session so you can experience what it's like if you're skeptical or nervous or worried that this you know, maybe this isn't the tool for you, but yeah. you can try it out. At, at Why least. not? It's free, yeah. right? It's free. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people will after they hear this. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Linda, for sharing your journey with us and how you help people. Truly inspiring. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for asking. I, I love what I do and I love talking about it, you know, about the possibilities of it and what it yeah. means for individuals who want to have live a happy life. Yeah. Well, thank you. I will let you get back to your tapping now. Okay. I will. And, uh, and I'll, I'll see you soon. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.